great tool for the product owner as well as for the team uh, to prioritize and then shuffle and reshuffle the backlogs. Um, we've discussed this at length with examples, so I'll move on. And we use planning poker for estimation. We use a, a very, very important tool. Again, all of these are not scrums tools, user stories, planning pokers, and then t-shirt sizing. These are not scrums um, techniques or tools. They're adopted into scrum. Um, so for example, we use this, uh, is, it, uh, is the story uh, Excel or is it a medium size or is it a, is a large size, depending on the, what, what we mean by medium or large. So there should be some kind of a benchmark. And that's what we actually do with the uh, estimation. And that's what gets done. Typically this estimation gets done usually before the sprint planning session or even during the sprint planning session. By the end of the sprint planning, there should be a good clarity in terms of what each user story that is part of that seven stories that we said we will do by the sprint, right? So with that seven stories, each story size, we should have at least an estimate that it is, is it a medium, large or something? And then if it is a medium, it is, let's say eight points. If it is a, a large, it's a 13 points, something like that, some kind of benchmark. So if you have got three mediums, two large and, and two small, so that, that, continue, that will give you the size of those seven stories that we said will be part of the sprint that would actually, make it to 70 points, right? Which is what we had agreed as the, as the capacity, as the velocity for the sprint. So that's what is the, um, is, is basically the planning poker and t-shirt sizing. And a very, very important um, uh, way that uh, Scrum really works is basically what we call the team board. So this is called a, a team board. It has got some kind of columns here. Here to do, doing, done. It could be analysis, design, development. It could be 10 other columns here, um, it, say it could be starting with requirements, um, analysis, architecture, design, uh, development, testing, uh, testing complete, and then it goes on and on, uh, and deployed, for example. So those, as many columns, there's no such limitation on this one. So it depends on what you put in those columns as well. But it gives an indication, this is called a visual information radiator it radiates information visually. So you don't have to ask, uh, what are you doing on which work? How much has, has been completed? Uh, what is still to be left? You don't have to ask anybody if you have got this up. So the team maintains this um, team board, the Kanban board. Again, it's called Kanban board because it's taken from Kanban. And this whole concept of this, this is called flow of work, it, which is basically a fundamental spirit of Kanban. We'll talk about that in the next few weeks. Um, just specifically on Kanban and how, how it works in Kanban. But basically Scrum adopted that approach of uh, the, the fundamental way that you manage the flow of work across these different streams. Um, again, very, very, very critical. Uh, and, and that's why Scrum is very popular. You're not checking, you're not asking them, into getting them into meetings, asking over phones or e sending emails. What is the work done? How much work is pending? What, is, uh, what are you working on now? You don't have to work worry about it because for example um, this is uh, Dave that, that could be Jay and and this could be Sarah and these people are actually working on uh, and and each of these have got their own color so for example pink I'm not trying to be feminist or sexist or whatever but just for the sake of convenience we'll put uh, Sarah's uh, as pink or red um, Jay's as green and uh, and, and Dave's as uh, as orange so we can get to see from here that uh, this is, uh, this is done, this is to do, this is uh, doing, and this is work in progress, and this is done. So within a quick loop, you can actually get to see what, how much of work has uh, Sara completed, what has she still got to do, and what is, uh, what has, uh, um, what is uh, the work in progress of Sara just by looking at this. She doesn't have um, anything to do. She has already got two of the uh, tasks, work in progress, she has finished two of them already, right, and deployed them perhaps. And then Dave's, uh, we've got, uh, still he did not start four of the tasks. He has completed two of them and has got about two done, right? So you get to have an idea, similarly Jay's. So just by looking at it, you get to idea about how the work is progressing, right? That's the beauty of this uh, Kanban. It's called visual information radiator. They radiate the information visually very effectively, very, very powerful tool. I would suggest you uh, use that. Um, we use Trello, um, I use uh, TFS, Jira, all of these actually give you that flexibility. And then uh, we discussed this again at length, it's called BDD acceptance test cases or uh, Gherkin statements given, when, and then, right? This is how the test cases are written. It's called um, uh, 
you know, we have got a lot of tools that use this, uh, which again, uh, we've got some tools like um, uh, the butterfly tool and the, and also the, uh, what is the other one that is a very popular testing tool, Selenium, they all, they all accept this kind of uh, test cases. This is a test case written in plain English, natural English. So you don't have to know a lot of different uh, syntaxes and all that. Given this, when this event occurs, then the expected behavior is this, right? This is how it should behave. So given, when, and then. And then you actually write these test cases. We discussed this yesterday about the TDD, test-driven development, where you first write the test cases and then start the requirements and the, and, and the, and the piece of execution, the implementation. So first time around, write the test cases, uh, run them through, they, they fail. And then they actually do some work and then make sure that it, the, the, the test case are passed after a few iterations, right? So this is at the end of the sprint. You started the sprint with uh, 100 test cases. All of them fail after about day three. You again do the testing execution, then about uh, 20 pass and still you've got uh, um, 70 or 80 of them fail. And then you continue that after, after about a few days after the seventh day, you can actually get about 80 of the test cases uh, pass and you still have 20. And after the 10th day, which is the end of the sprint, you have got all of them pass. So that's the spirit of, uh, again, um, BDD and the test-driven development widely used in Scrum.